What's up everyone and welcome. In this episode, we are going to review the massive 2 terabits a second distributed denial of service attack that Cloudflare successfully blocked on behalf of one of the clients. This is the largest DDoS attack that Cloudflare has experienced. The only other larger attack that comes to mind would be the one that Microsoft claimed to have blocked from over 70,000 different bots. Let's see what we can learn from this story. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. Earlier this week, Cloudflare automatically detected and mitigated a DDoS attack that peaked just below 2 terabytes a second, the largest they've seen to date. Now, this was a multi-vector attack combining DNS amplification attacks and UDP floods. The entire attack lasted just one minute. The attack was launched from approximately 15,000 bots running a variant of the original Murray code on IoT devices and unpatched GitLab instances. So again, Microsoft defended an attack with 2.4 terabits per second, which was spread across 70,000 bots. Now this new attack against Cloudflare had only 15,000 bots and reached two terabits a second. So fewer machines, but still a massive amount of traffic. The attack was launched by a Mirai botnet variant composed of 15,000 bots, as I mentioned. It combined DNS amplification attacks and UDP floods. Also, as I mentioned before, the botnet included Internet of Things devices and GitLab instances. Again, just to reiterate. In case you're not familiar with Mirai, it is a malware that infects smart devices that run on ARC processes, turning them into a network of remotely controlled bots, or zombies. This network of bots, called a botnet, is often used to launch distributed denial-of-service attacks. Murray scans the internet for IoT devices that run on the ARC processor. Now, this processor runs a stripped-down version of the Linux operating system. So, Linux operating system without all of the whiz-bang features that you might need for, like, running a server. If the default username and password combo is not changed, Murray is able to log into that stripped down version of Arc uh, of Linux on the Arc processor for whatever the device is, this IoT device, and they can infect it. IoT, which is short for Internet of Things, of course, is just a fancy term for smart devices that can connect to the internet. These devices can be home appliances, baby monitors, DVRs, CC cameras, headsets, smoke detectors, vehicles, network routers, agricultural devices, medical devices, or environmental monitoring devices. Though Murray's original creators, the guys who actually wrote the code, have been caught, their source code lives on. It has given birth to variants such as Okiru, the Satori, the Masuta, and the Pure Masuta. The Pure Masuta, for example, is able to weaponize the HNAP bug in D-Link devices, so routers. The OMG strain of the Murray, on the other hand, transforms IoT devices into proxies that allow cyber criminals to bounce through all these proxies and remain anonymous. There is also the recently discovered and powerful botnet variously nicknamed IOTrooper, or IoT Rooper, and Reaper, which is able to compromise IoT devices at a much faster rate than Murray. The Reaper is able to target a large number of device makers meaning the manufacturers of different devices and who manufactures them, and has far greater control over its bots. Experts warn that terabit strong attacks are becoming common, confirming the trend in the overall increase of the intensity of distributed denial of service attacks. How did Cloudflare mitigate this attack? To begin with, Cloudflare systems constantly analyze traffic samples out of path, which allows them to asynchronously detect distributed denial of service attacks without causing latency or impacting performance. So they are sniffing and checking data while it's passing through the pipe, but it, they're doing it in a way that's not affecting how fast that information gets from point A to point B. So your internet is not slowed down or the website returning the page to the customer is not being slowed down. Now, once the attack traffic was detected, within sub-seconds, Cloudflare systems generated a real-time signature that surgically matched against the attack patterns to mitigate the attack without impacting legitimate traffic. Once generated, this fingerprint is propagated as an ephemeral mitigation rule to the most optimal location in the Cloudflare edge. So, they place it in the right spot 
within their entire network and their mesh and in their, at the edge um, for cost efficient mitigation. So they're not, they're, they want to use the maximum amount of resources. They want to use the correct balance of resources so that it reduces cost to the customer, but also have maximum effect in blocking this. In this specific case, as with most L3 or L4 distributed denial of service attacks, the rule was pushed in line into the Linux kernel express data path to drop the attack packet at wire speed. Cloudflare's third quarter distributed denial of service attacks trends report also revealed that network layer distributed denial of service attacks increased by 44% quarter over quarter. So from quarter two, the second quarter, to the third quarter, a 44% jump in the types of attacks. Now, not all of them are these massive two terabits second attacks, but there are. But you don't necessarily need a two terabyte a second uh, per second attack to take down systems, depending on how big and how large the infrastructure of the website is. If you're on like a three dollar hoster, then you'll need less traffic to basically plug up that hole or that pipe for people to get to your website. If you're like an Amazon, then you really need to throw the like tanks and ships and whatever into the into that pipe to kind of plug it up. So what can we learn? Well, besides now maybe having a better understanding of what the Mirai botnet is, you're welcome. Uh, we could see that the threat of distributed denial of service attacks is becoming a reality for more companies, again, both large and small. This will continue to increase no matter what size your company is. In one of my previous episodes, you might recall that I shared with you how ransomware gangs are now incorporating DDoS attacks against victims to apply more pressure on the victim to pay the ransom. So, in a ransomware attack, not only are your company's network and computers encrypted, and the criminals stole all your data, and they're threatening that if you go to the authorities, they're gonna basically delete everything and dump everything onto the internet. But on top of that, they're now starting a distributed denial of service attack against your company, <coughs> excuse me, and its online sources to further damage your company's brand, its name, and reputation if you do not pay. So we need to see how we can incorporate distributed denial of service attack mitigation services like those of Cloudflare, Microsoft, or whoever else provides them to ensure that our online platforms remain functional under such an attack. With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already and smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Don't forget to ride. Farewell.